Hi everyone, welcome back. And please uh, give a warm welcome to Petar and Alexa from CIF. This is Petar. <laughs> I'm coming late. Alex, right here. Okay. All right. Well, hey there. Welcome. I'm here with a topic which uh, you may find, we might find familiar. A lot of fine speakers have been discussing this for the past couple of days, or either yesterday and today. And I'm sure you heard many wonderful things. Well, we're here with a story that's a bit different. I don't want to say unique, but definitely unusual. About 18 months ago, I was sitting in the kitchen with my good friend Radmila and her husband. She's right here in the audience. And I told her that we were facing a conundrum. Our partner, N26, the mobile bank with over 7 million of users all around Europe, has presented us with this amazing opportunity. We were to build a working prototype for a trading proposition while building a whole new product line and hiring all these people who would deliver. Now, in not as many words, what we have done thus far We've had a plethora of these amazing products, such as Accurate, TwizGuard, Select9, used by more than half of the Serbian balance, by banking balance sheet. But all these products were specialized tools used by specialized groups of people. Typically, if you were working in risk or treasury, you'd be using our tools. What we haven't done thus far, well, you guessed it, we haven't been able to build, uh, or rather we haven't uh, we, haven't, we haven't built uh, uh, scalable, robust apps for millions of devices simultaneously. And this was our conundrum. My friends didn't tell me that it was going to be impossible. I guess they didn't want to hurt my feelings. But they did tell me it was going to be difficult. And guess what? They were right. But we did it anyway. And here's how. We're going to share a couple of postcards from our journey. We'll start off by discussing what this amazing product of ours is. Uh, I will say a few words about the values. Our chief of engineering, Petr Wutzilla, will then take over, discuss the process, and discuss the, the, our tech stack. You will hear a bit more about what, uh, uh, what, what made us what we are today. You'll hear a bit more about, uh, about how we adapted the famous Spotify model, and hear a bit more about both tried and tested technologies and methodologies and the experiments we've had uh, thus far. So what is this amazing product? What makes us stand out? If you had a career somewhat, somewhat like mine, you worked in a startup or with a startup, or perhaps you worked in a major tech company or inside of one. And you may have noticed one thing. Serbia has amazing tech talent. Our engineers, our developers, our mathematicians are second to none. And I say that with over 12 years of experience of managing various teams. However, typically, business or product counterparts were somewhere else. Germany, US, you name it. All over the world, Singapore, Hong Kong. Well, what makes us special is the fact that we have product right here in Belgrade. Securities trading is a highly regulated uh, area. And of course, we're under overall umbrella of our partner, N26. However, within that frame, we have full autonomy to come up with these amazing product initiatives and deliver on them. That's unusual. Again, I don't want to say un unique, but that's unusual. And not only for, for this market. We're very proud of the fact that uh, we are tightly aligned but loosely coupled talk. And we're very proud of the fact that we have already started to internationalize. And you can speak with some of our staff uh, 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 that comes from all over the place, uh, right at their booth. What is the value proposition that, uh, we, have been <laughs> that we have been developing? Well, if you're an N26 user, we want to empower you to trade directly in stocks and exchange traded funds. So no stepping stones, no depository receipts, or you'd be able to buy in directly into Tesla or Amazon. 
This is something that, uh, uh, that's been well familiar in the US market, particularly in terms of fractional investing. But it's entirely new for Europe. And we're right here at the pole position for this. Why is this a big deal? Well, you may be familiar with this extremely famous graph. It's highly stylized here, courtesy of a wonderful design team. But imagine if instead of buying Tesla stock, you were, you were able to purchase simultaneously into 500 of largest companies in the world uh, uh, run by people who are as talented as you. S&P 500, for instance, is a famous index. There's a myriad of index tracking funds, such as SPY, but also, for instance, Vanguard. And what you would be able to do at the tip of your fingers is precisely buy into something like this. It's something that large financial institutions have been able to do for decades. We're bringing this to you as N26 users. And how did we go about this? Well, we had a very ambitious uh, value proposition, as you've seen. We had a couple of milestones, markers along the way. In July of last year, we had around 36 people, mostly uh, with a highly quantitative background, but with seeds of every team that we wanted to build. Petra will say a few words about the best tax of our uh, uh, tech teams. But as a snapshot, we had been growing by about four or five people per month. And we're right now at actually 89, as of this morning. We aim to be at around 100 uh, 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 at around New Year's. I'm deliberately fuzzy here because we don't care so much about quantity. We don't want to shovel people in. What we care about is quality, wonderful people. And if you're interested, there's always a place for wonderful, quality people in our team. What brings all these people together? Well, a couple of things. For one, empathy. Being able to put yourself into the shoes of another. The clients, our stakeholders, our colleagues. Understanding the perspective of another. Energy. We are proud of our startup energy, of that get up and go. We are proud of the fact that day in day out, we try to communicate to our colleagues, to our friends. We are world class professionals. We are proud of it, based on our experience, based on our, on our partner guidelines. And finally, last but not the least, execution, delivery is second to none. Now, Petr, what did you say 18 months ago when I approached you? Well, no, not when you approached me, that was a different story, but that's when we are kind of sharing stories. I was approached by a mutual friend of ours who basically said, oh, I cannot do this, you are good with this. Uh, there's some German bank who wants to hire 200 people until the end of the year, said whoever has been hiring people in this industry. I was saying, okay, I'm gonna talk to them and tell them not to come to Belgrade. But they ended up not German bank, but N36, which I regard more as a very innovative startup and not 200, we probably will never be 200, but at that time, as much as we need, and it was clear it was less. So basically a few good people at the beginning. So yeah, that interested me, and further going, going, no, I, I'll change it, but I need it. Uh, going further down the line, basically, other things clicked in terms of like process and technologies, and just to come to my part where kind of Alex and I were drawing this presentation, uh, and a little bit about my background, by the way. Uh, I've been like an engineering manager, or maybe more in executive roles, la la last 10 years. And my job, and whoever works in similar jobs, and I see a few of you in the audience, which I know, you live the scalability. What is this key scalability? Not the fun scalability we like, the one where you need to scale your service to handle a higher load. This is scalability basically increasing the number of people so that you can have, uh, I don't know, you can build more, but trying not to reduce a lot efficiency or better saying effectiveness, because 
you will reduce it. There's no chance, basically. It's not the same when you work with one team, two teams, maybe a sweet spot. When you come to more teams, especially if you change location, then it's hell. Great part here also, what, what kind of, and Alexa mentioned that entire product is developed from Belgrade. So we are not, we don't feel like we are kind of a team working for N26. Here is our chief of product, here is our chief of platform, here is our uh, UX lead. I, know, I don't see others, but, but a lot of people, but everything, basically. Uh, of course, we have to build a trading app. That's it. But I think more or less that was the kind of trading app which handled US and major US and European markets. But the rest, it's ours, basically, for the business model was ours. Of course, we are aligning a little bit. We cannot kind of do it on our own, but that's why I, it feels really like a startup. And basically, for me, it's not different than the last couple of companies which were. So, as I said, uh, this is not maybe unique to me. What was unique is some of the kind of conditions here. So, basically, all of us who are managers, it's good. The industry is great. It's always good that you're scaling, you're growing, but we all know there are not enough, not of, well, enough people and it's getting tougher and tougher and we live that basically that's major part of our lives in a managerial or engineering or executive especially so the contact is what what i haven't done so far at, at least basically in a startup for an entire product not for a team just working on something is development from scratch so zero lines of code zero in the company infrastructure supporting that kind of development these apps are great but they work they are on-premise installations they are installed there's nothing basically to support such a such a service mobile development as well completely different so that's here colleagues chief of infra who helped a lot to kind of build that team almost from scratch so basically in july a bunch of us came cool kind of managers most of most of the managers for different identified kind of functional functional teams or let's say competencies. So uh, back end, well, we didn't have back end at the time. <laughs> Basically we had platform, UX, mobile, QE, QA. In, in the world known as QA, in, in N36 QE because, of, because it's quality excellence. And I'm now in the phase where I'm mixing those two. Soon I'll probably stick to QE. Uh, iterative product development, okay, that's normal. But these are kind of the context in terms of like, basically, uh, what, I, what is kind of the, the topic of the, the mind 10, 10 minutes, because I can talk about it probably 10 days, is basically how, how I, I approach this and what, the, what are the things I care about when doing the scaling. Of course, this is the first time I'm redoing from scratch, so I had to also kind of think and not use previous experience, think about and be maybe a little bit creative or read something. Uh, but uh, basically, and just to mention that I don't cover here the most important part when it comes to scaling, that's people and culture. So, yeah, I can talk about recruiting, hiring, etc. But basically here the topic is how, what kind of process can, and in our case, kind of worked to support all of these conditions. Basically, you have zero infra, zero people, and you're adding them a as you go. Process as well, nothing. Uh, you are required, basically. We are building a product, but we've been given a chance, and N36 wasn't prepared. We didn't get pre pressure, but we would have, definitely. They wanted to see prototypes. They don't care that SIF didn't have mobile developers or AWS. They could have hired some company who, who did. And yeah, they also wanted to partner with us, and that's the track we are now. We are not working. As a company on a project for N26, we are becoming N26. So that's also something that we needed to show in terms of like fast execution, fast ramping up of teams, etc. And finally, uh, what Alexa said, the slogan may be familiar to, to some of you or most. It's kind of like getting a little bit now old, but that's slogan from, from Spotify. And uh, that's something that I say also drew me to N26 because I was able to do an interview process to interview them as well, like you always do. And they really kind of took a lot of the Spotify principles. So it's always um, an error to kind of copy somebody. You cannot 
these different companies, different cultures, but N26 starting, it's completely logical, starting at a time, well, maybe two years after that, around two years after that, Spotify boom, uh, Spotify greatest company, Spotify development model, Spotify everything, and they're starting in Berlin. So, and they want to be hip and cool. So basically, but they stick with it and it, they made it work. So basically, this alignment part was actually, I'm putting it here because always you need to be aligned, but basically, that alignment is very weak and even kind of, even if it was stronger, the choices they made were very in line with what we, what we wanted to achieve. So not a lot of wisdom here, but basically this is something also, let's say, uh, it's not the same, but is by design, by inspired by, their, by, by the principles in those kind of, and if you haven't watched the videos, they're great simple cartoons of 15 minutes each, two, and they say a lot of things. I think I've been watching it at least once a year, last 10 years, and this is the first time yesterday that I didn't see something new. So maybe I was tired, so I didn't pay attention. But usually, I, completely, I, I never saw that before, but never mind. Uh, we are not gonna advertise Spotify here. Uh, basically, what is this? How, basically, this works even when you're because the idea is that you're also building a process. You don't want to work at something and you know that you're going to change it completely after three months. So basically, we want to be feature focused and, and product focused as a startup. Feature teams should be able. So all of these teams are considered like a mini startups. Not exactly, but they are working on some of the parts of the product, which are product components, and they, they live it. Product owner has a strategy vision, at least in an ideal case, of course. We sometimes didn't have product owners, sometimes didn't have somebody. The idea is that they are completely capable to develop everything by themselves. They don't need to contact anyone, wait for anyone, etc. How do you do that? When you still need to deploy it, when you still need to kind of uh, have, uh, have uh, Kafka, uh, instances on AWS, uh, notifications, push notifications for the phone, reporting, taxing, taxes, etc. Basically, they're the, the empowered teams are the ones you, you see by their mission, basically who are, let's say, they are not something we used to kind of like core architecture teams, and they are not only the, the, the bare platform infrastructure devops guys, they are the guys who are building those components which are common to the system and making, basically they are not, of course, now they are because we are, we are developing them from, from scratch, but the idea is that they, they, are, they are not getting requests and then you wait for the, this team to finish and then you can start working. It happens now, but in the future, the idea is that they provide a service and API so that the guys can even add similar functionalities if they need it. So that's how you, you kind of decouple, and that's the part of the slogan, tightly and I loosely coupled, basically. You don't need to kind of call some guy, check their backlog, they say we have higher priority things, they call the head, head product, and et, et cetera. That cannot work if you want to be fast. And yeah, a little bit about the feature teams, and uh, that's kind of basically the, the approach you more or less have to do if you want to kind of work in a mini startup. So this is like a example of the most common case of, a, of our feature team since our, our interface is mobile apps. We have, so always keep it to a minimum. So we have two, two, two native platforms like everyone, Android and iOS, so two, mo two mobile developers. Backend can vary and backend is basically the, the kind of heaviest part and the, the, the most, most of the team are backend engineers. So from two to four. And currently we have two through three QE. We are transitioning to some model of N26 where Q, QA as a process is shared. So we have to have less people who are kind of more like owning that process and not be the only ones who are doing it. But now it's like this. And I say typically because uh, again, heavy processing in the backend. So maybe a kind of Alex mentioned it's a trading app, but trading app which kind of handles some of the middle and back office things like taxes, uh, order flow. It's not just uh, supporting a nice UI on the mobile app. It's a lot of currently 20 plus microservices and we have a lot to go. And yeah, time probably I'm always, oh, okay, cool, good. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, one other thing which also kind of you usually work in this kind of hybrid model. You either have by functional teams or you have these cross-functional teams, but then you also have a choice where to put the management. And uh, 
aligning with M36, we didn't have to, again, basically, but seemed, seemed kind of normal. Engineering manager is uh, leading this team, the development team, basically. But so basically, the guys from above, he is leading it. So kind of pros and cons of that. The pros is definitely that he is completely then in charge of the delivery. He is on the same, he lives the same thing. He's, uh, let's say, uh, he's, uh, his, uh, his people are, and again, but he, to emphasize, his primary responsibility is growth of that people, not delivery. It is really important as well, so it's cannot, cannot shine in this and be bad in delivery, of course, but the first one is, is, uh, is, is priority number one. That's, the, the, that's where you kind of think of, okay, but he is not a back-end developer, how can he kind of grow back-end developers, but you know, usually, you know, he doesn't grow them. He basically consults with some tech leads. He's the one who kind of set up the plan. He, you, managers rarely work directly with the people and grow them in that, that discipline, even after some time, if they're not doing individual contribution, they, they, they are not the ones to do it. So uh, again, it's always somebody from the same competency will probably better understand, and we do basically. Our, back our managers are one of these three, basically. So. So sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, and it is a little bit disadvantage, but much more, for example, is the case when you have managers for each of these, backend, mobile, uh, QE, then you also have a UX in the team, you have product, and you imagine a conflict. Uh, API is not good, they never create APIs, we don't think, and who solves that problem, which affects delivery of that team? Backend manager, uh, mobile manager, maybe product, because he didn't announce it time, and and then, then, then it, it takes a lot of time. And also, we set up the sense of, of that, that they are the team working together. They are on that, when they, they have these managers, they are working as a team on that, and they can have a sense of feeling, but then they go on each cycle and report to the manager, and their performance is evaluated by the manager who is a back-end team manager, or this one. So, but again, worked in both models, there are pluses and cons, it depends on the context. This time it seemed, because of strong product focus, that this was better, but we'll see. Uh, usually teams have their focus areas, especially now since we're building everything from scratch, but we will not uh, tie them. For example, that for now we have discovery, uh, order, portfolio, taxes, but the idea is that we do not have them like that forever. Why? Because basically we will gonna launch the app. For example, taxes, you build them once. If you build them okay, then you're changing when the regulation changes. So why have 10 people working on taxes all the time? Basically, the idea is engineering, like always, engineering is there to support product development in the most effective way. That's, let's say, for every engineering team mission, sometimes we don't want to recognize it, but it is. So basically we need to be able to kind of each quarter, every six months, every year, kind of switch the teams, not people. Even for people, it's really important that the technologies are consistent. Of course, not the same, never the same, because then you, then you end up with a problem that you're kind of boxing people and they, they, they don't have their input. But let's say some of the standards and uh, kind of some of the main things the same, so that at least on the techn technical part, it's easy to switch. The domain is such that, for example, it's not easy to go into Texas, you go out of Texas and some of the other parts are, are maybe easier to understand the domain. Uh, okay, and of course, I added this because I saw our product people here in the audience quickly. So we have dedicated product manager and UX. So they are part of the team definitely, but we are here talking about the, the deliver, let's say the, the dev team, which is kind of more of like an org structure. Uh, process. Uh, basically, even though this core section is called process, it's more like uh, organizational, let's say, more like a development model of kind of organization. That's the focus. Process is definitely something that needs to be agile. Well, it is Scrum. Most people know Scrum best. It is, of course, maybe not religious Scrum, but we do have all ceremonies. We have two week iterations, so themes are in sync. That's, that's a must and they, they share basically the backlog, although it's clear most of the times which component needs to work or which feature team works. We currently have five, no, four, 
we are close to opening five. You have people for five teams and, and the plan that I know will be six. So again, not too much, not 200 like, like that person told me. Uh, and power teams, kinda, it will take a long time to explain that because they differ also from company to company. Let's say, our case is specific since, yeah, we are, we are kind of, we act as a startup, but it's stupid to redo the things if they exist on the N36 platform. For example, they do have uh, observability monitoring logs. They do have other things. We are not going to build them again. But what we had to build, since we are still not N36, is the complete infrastructure platform code uh, in a regulated environment like finances. We cannot currently share that, but we can kind of model it based on based on what they did. And for example, that what I'm going to say, this our empower team is partly in Belgrade and mostly like 90% while we consult with the database part. So what is the power basically? Well, I mentioned, well, this is the mission. Increase the productivity of our workflows by offering a base uh, platform, productivity tools and hardware that are simple, reliable, secure and compliant. So basically it's not only every basically uh, in terms of like they, there is a data team. Data warehouse, data analytics, database. Uh, observability monitoring is a team. Uh, SRE, well, SRE is, is infra and platform, but basically under platform. Okay, so this is, oh, oh I'm going backwards. Uh, so these are like the key groups, but let's say internal IT, you can imagine it's like networking, but also networking between like different VPNs for our, our software, not, not because we integrate with other banks, etc. So not pure networking of the offices, but that as well, uh, computers as well. And platform team is not only DevOps, but everything I mentioned and probably more because I always forget, but it's like from, uh, from CICD to, to AWS, everything on AWS, then to something which sometimes is not called platform or empower, that's observability, monitoring, logs, reporting, uh, notifications, everything which you can think of which is common and not something which is actually uh, uh, our core product. So sometimes it's not in platform, something that is not core product, but something which is like a used by other teams and they need it to be more efficient. I think that will be enough for the empowered teams. And just one slide, I wanted to put it here, although it's completely different from what they're talking about now. It is part of the process. Definitely, if you want to do this, no long-term releases, basically. That's not the model. Anyways, basically, small frequent releases, for example, N36, Alex said, it's bank, 8 million users, uh, software and service on AWS, multi-tenant system, so every client is on the same account. Well, account, AWS account, it's connected. So every deploy can fuck up everything for every client. Of course not, because they're microservices, but theoretically, yes. Maybe you don't deploy just that, maybe somebody screws up some script for deployment. Uh, but what they do, they are using, I think, some, I think several lectures today about, well, well in the program, which mentioned trunk-based development, and we are as well, but completely, basically, you are, let's say, even a junior engineer working in a team in N26 on a, on a service which is already live, and you probably will commit during that sprint to production in like matter of minutes, three or four times, basically. You merge, the code when it's merged, of course, it's not merged directly to production, but that's the last step, human step. Afterwards, there's automation which you expect to pass in most of the cases, just regression testing on, on different environments, and you count that it's in production. Of course, they have some protection like feature toggles, but that's for new features or significant change of features. When you're working with which something exists, there's no feature toggle. You have canary, but canary is something really not to be used <laughs> as, as, a, as a safety net, really. Basically, what, what do they do? Basically, something that we preach often, and sometimes when you start with already kind of uh, existing people, culture and process and tech stack, it may be impossible to, to, or not impossible, but very difficult and probably not popular within that organization to do is uh, quality from the start, basically. So, so it is there definitely, basically, because uh, otherwise, they, they, they would close the doors, basically. It's not that the, the, there's no testing. There's a lot of testing. There's a lot of thinking about security, money laundering, fraud, a lot of thinking about uh, normal bugs. But it all goes before that developers commit. 
will that developer do it or do we have some other people in the team who will do it? It's less important. No time. Okay. Uh, technologies, anyways, not a lot. You, technologies, I'm not longer a technical man since I'm manager. But yeah, the same context applies here as well to support this. Uh, honestly, basically, uh, technologies have been growing and this is not a unique problem. Most of the, let's say, but what is important also basically you're hiring as well. So basically it needs to be something where you, and building. You need to onboard people fast and it still needs to be attractive. But, you know, uh, basically you see our technologies. Yeah, and what are kind of, when we talk about to support this, what are the pillars something that we have to have? Uh, things like easy or, or Java or whatever is maybe something that depends on, on the available people, your preference, not only, but, but let's say, okay. Microservices, definitely infrastructure, cloud computerization, infrastructure code, CICD, but through CICD and DevOps, not as a person working on AWS, but DevOps is every th single thing which you do, try to automate it and, and do it programmatically. So that's not only what we think about DevOps, DevOps are doing. So everything, try to automate. And these are kind of the diamonds. So if you want to know more about our stack, you can always talk or write. I'll, I'll be at the booth, most of us will be at the boot, our booth. And Alex, I say, yeah. We should say that uh, this includes uh, both yeah. some legacy technologies in, in all of our products. Uh, uh, so yeah, just, just maybe some names. Yeah. Definitely with this AWS. Uh, well, more or less everything which can be a managed AWS service and regulator supported, it is. Uh, with our flavor, of course. Then Kubernetes, Helm, Terraform, Vault, uh, Spring Boot, but not Java, Kotlin. I don't know. GitHub, GitHub Actions, all of the, let's say, famous mainstream names. Well, I can click as well. Well, we yeah. hope we, we, you enjoyed the uh, presentation today. Um, we're really excited about what we do. Uh, we're really excited about having product right here, autonomous, uh, uh, aligned, but not uh, 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 tightly coupled, yeah. Um, we are right there at booth number four. As we said, we're almost done with this initial push, but there's always room for uh, 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 wonderful quality people. Uh, we have some sweets and, uh, yeah, these people uh, don't if you're interested, us. register for our open days. Thank you so much. Thank you.